Clubbers, hope you're jamming in your seat. It's your time. It's your weekly dance break. And also, chance to chat about the Malazan Book of the Fallen. We are on Midnight Tides, starting book two of that novel. I'm Jeff Kanata, here with Lana Bashinsky. Hi, Lana. Hello, and good morning. Excited to be here. Me too. Book continues to be good. Book continues to be good. It, yeah. Book these chapters, it's, ah, I feel like there's so much I'm missing. There's so much I don't know. I'm excited to get to it. I just, yeah. ooh. Uh, In I, contrast yeah. to the last couple of weeks, I feel like these chapters are more philosophical. Yes, I agree. But uh, still still meaty, still lots to discuss. Mm -hmm. We always like to start the book club with a non-spoiler topic, something that's not about the specific uh, novel that we're reading, something that you can enjoy if you're not caught up with us. And Lana, you have a topic you wanted to introduce this week. I sure do. Uh, we've talked about our favorite books by way of content, uh, and maybe there's some similarities here. But what I'm wondering this week, Jeff, is what is your most special book? Do you have a particularly special or sentimental physical yeah. or emotional the, object of a book? We, we were talking about this a little bit before we started recording. And, you know, I guess you kind of have to define special because I think we could take that in a lot of different ways. But I think this one's going to be a little bit of a show and tell this mm. week. Um, I was racking my brain trying to really hone in on what I consider special. There are definitely, now that I have two young children and I read to them every night before bed, I definitely have books that I would put in the special category that are children's books mm. uh, because they mean so much to my kids and myself and our connection right before bedtime. And that is a rotating, uh, a rotating merry-go-round of uh, what is in vogue at the, at the moment. But there are certain books that are, that are really, there's certain children's books I can't read anymore because I cry every time. You know, there's, it's like mean to write a children's book for kids that is all about like, I will always love you. And you know, it's, <laughs> there's, there's the ones that are just like about loss and grief. And you're like, this is in the context of a children's book. I can't do this uh, every night. This is mm -hmm. not a nightly occurrence. Um, and my, my wife got us a, a children's book where you can like submit your picture and your name and it puts you in. So it's, it's like daddy, it's the daddy book and my picture's in it and the kids read it. And so that's special. Uh. But setting aside all the kids stuff and all the sort of specialness around reading to my children, I feel like there, what I want to share now as far as special books is a relatively new entrant into my life. And it was gifted to me by uh, our mutual friend, Danish Syed. And mm. what makes it so special, this is Mm. A, a loosely, I think you know what it is. This oh, is yeah. a, 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 you know, not what people might typically expect on a book club podcast uh, talking about a book, yet it is a book. It is this exact replica Ugh. of the Grail Diary from Indiana, jo Indiana Jones and the Last Crusade, uh, painstakingly recreated by our friend. It is a one to one. Perfect replica. Oop, stuff falling out. Uh, one it to one. Was perfect a replica. one to one. <laughs> yeah, now, now yeah, <laughs> no longer as he destroys it for the camera. Um, incredible piece of art. Incredible piece of work. It is a book that is uh, has a prominent place on my shelf. Uh, actually, I have a little stand for it. And you know, it, it, this is Doctor Jones's diary in the in the in the film that they follow to find. You know. Penitent Man shall pass all mm -hmm. of the uh, important clues and every single page. It, oh God, it keeps happening. <laughs> that one at least I know where it goes. Uh, every single page is a, like a perfect one-to-one -one movie replica that he 
he he withered the pages. He scanned them and and composited the, like leather bound it. It's an uh, exquisite memor piece of memorabilia and homage to something that meant a lot to me as a kid, mm -hmm. and a, a really wonderful gift that I cherish. So uh, I would I would designate that as my most special book at the that moment. Is a special book, and didn't Danish make like a YouTube video about how he made it too? I think he did. Yeah, uh, you should search for Danish Syed is his name, and uh, probably on his YouTube channel. I don't. Yeah. I'll, I'll search for that and see if I can put a link in the show notes yeah, uh, about so, that. So awesome! Danish is just incredible. Yeah, that he is. That is he, a special. That is a special book. I love indeed. that. I love that. What is your special book? I brought. I brought two over because I. I feel. Even though, you know, this is my uh, topic today, I'm like a little self-conscious that maybe I've talked about this before. I've ta I've definitely talked about it before. Maybe never to you. Um, this is my special book. Um, oh, you've definitely brought this book up in our conversation because I've searched for its cover art to put in I the know, video. <laughs> like 10 times, but this is the book. It's huge. It's bigger uh, than I expected. I don't think I've ever seen, like, shown it on yeah. the show before. But uh, just in case I haven't told the story, I'll be like super brief. I, when I was in elementary school, I, I rented this book out from the library for like 14 weeks straight. Like, as long as I was in school, I'm renting this book out. And then the author, David Bouchard, came to visit and he was like, I'll give, a, I'll give this special edition away. I'm going to recite one of the poems that if you know what animal it is, put your hand up and then you can win the book. And it was like the most stressful experience of my young life because I, I knew every poem in there, like memorized front to back period. Uh, and he, uh, he, he let it go on and on. He gave every so many stanzas. I'm sitting there <laughs> like I knew it from line one and he just ignored me. And finally, finally, he so and I'm sitting here just like trying to be You're like quiet. Lisa Simpson in the in the in the room, just like just staring at him, hand up, like ooh, ooh, me, uh, me, David. Me. David. No, because if you're quiet, you get selected. That's how yeah. kids work. And so I'm sitting there just like, David, look at me, look at me. And finally he picked me. Uh and he goes, uh, uh you know, I got the right answer. And he goes, That is correct. And I actually knew you'd have it, so I, I signed it to you already. <gasps> Oh, it's signed. So he pre-signed it. Wow. Before even reading the poem out loud because he knew that I would get the answer because the librarian told him. Wow. That's um, awesome. It was like shocking and like the whole like everybody around me like exploded and it was clapping. That was oh. awesome. Um, and then I went uh, from there. Uh, that was fifth grade. And then in, in seventh fifth grade, grade in the year 2000. <laughs> I had graduated from college. <laughs> and then two years later, <laughs> uh, I was in seventh grade and I had moved cities and I was at a new school and he came to visit the school again and I brought the book and then he, I said, I don't know if you remember me. And he signed it again and he said, and again, Lana, 2002. Oh, he says, thank you so incredible. much for loving my book. So this is my most special book. That is very special. That's a beautiful thing. Yeah. That's a beautiful thing. Um, wow. Um, another one I, I, that just popped into my head and I could walk over and get, but I won't. Um, it's right over. It's right there. Um, is uh, my dad gave me his copy of, of The Hobbit and The Lord of the Rings. Uh, and I had, they're like little, like, I think they still have the price tag on them of like wow. $2.95 from whatever year my dad bought them, you know, before I was ever a twinkle in his eye. Um, but he, he gifted them to me and I read them uh, in the version that he, he read. So also that very is, special to me. Uh, yeah. That is so special. Great I, topic. Wonderful I, topic. I also have, I want to actually oh, show it off. Oh, please. Um, a first edition is the animation, Ooh. The Illusion of Life, which for any of the animators out there, probably very few, if any, watching this, uh, be jealous. It's very cool. This is a that gift is, to That's me. a tome. It is a tome. This is this is my everything I need to know to do my job by Frank That's Thomas amazing. and Ollie Johnson. Uh, but yeah, very special. This is a gift to me by my other really good uh, pal, Brandon Mason, uh, senior two animator on Overwatch too. Very um, cool. Yeah, it's great. It's great. 
If you'd like to send up uh, send us a topic for the non spoiler section, we'd love that. You can send it to dlcfeedback at gmail.com or post it on the Discord, which is five by five DLC on Discord. Uh, and lots of different ways you can get a hold of us. You can even post it on the YouTube uh, as a comment. Uh, anything you'd like us to talk about in the non spoiler section, we're always looking for great topics. But let's get into it because mm. uh, we're starting book two, Prowse of the Day in the novel Midnight Tides. So spoilers starting now for chapter six and seven. Chapter six starts with, uh, again, this these chapters I feel like very philosophical. And we start with this kind of rumination on the sea and gods of the sea, the dangers of the sea, the perils of being a sailor, mm -hmm. which I just thought was absolutely exquisite. Yeah. Beautifully Beautiful. written. Uh, yeah. I, I, I was so taken by this little section, which at the beginning is just sort of like talking about, you know, myth, almost like these, um, these superstitions and how yes. sailors deal with being on the sea. And it just felt so true. You know, it felt so uh, insightful as to human beings. And in this case, fantastical races of all sorts but uh in our you know in our world how human beings have struggled to deal with their with, with the the majesty and dangers of the sea and what that all that entails in you know setting out into the unknown and often to your to your doom uh and and how that has has instilled this mythology and, and these mm -hmm. superstitions and beliefs all around it. It just was so beautiful, I thought. I loved it because it started in a place that I feel like is very, like very resonant and like just that that world of superstition of, I think it's in this section where it's like, oh, you want to make sure that you're like given enough, but you don't want to give too much because then the sea is going to get annoyed at you. It's going to get you anyway. It's like- yeah. It's kind of like a horoscope. It's like, no matter what you do, it's going to sound right in some way kind of thing. Yeah. Uh, but that's like, feels very like grounded and experiences that I could have possibly had with like watching people play sports. So you got to do this, <laughs> but don't do it too many times. Yeah. We're going to lose the game. It's like, but, you want to appease the spirits. You don't yeah. want them to notice you too much though. <laughs> exactly. You want to be in that, that, that sweet, sweet spot, spot, that Goldilocks <laughs> zone of spiritual uh i don't know don't mess with me yeah. appeasement and the <laughs> appeasement. uh the but then it it i love that like in the same way that like sort of the beginning of the book like the whole not just the the beginning of the novels are there's like an unfamiliarity and there's like little little threads of details i'm like okay i know that i know that i know that the same this whole scene it's like just the sea and it's like okay Starting wide and then going, yeah. oh, there's these boats. Oh, those are the Lethari boats. Right. The Lethari boats that everybody was killed. And then, oh, the spirits of the sea. Oh, it's not like a superstitious thing. Oh, yeah. it's there, baby. And it's there's big a, and it's scary. Yeah. And it's uh, it's destroying everything. Uh, this, this thing, which ev eventually comes back later on in these chapters, we get a little more information about this bound spirit mm -hmm. that is enormous that can carry three ships on its back uh, and can crush all of these other fish and crustaceans in the, in the water uh, that scares people. Um, and it, you know, the, we have the wraiths appearing on the deck, but also there's this bound spirit and mm -hmm. it's bad. It's terrifying. Yeah. I just, I just love that it, it starts hypothetical and yes. ends in. Yeah. Oh, right now we watch that happen. <laughs> yeah. All sailors have a, you know, have a strange relationship <laughs> with the spirits of the sea. They they spit and they, you know, they're all this very superstitious. But also there's a giant spirit of the sea <laughs> that murders everything. Yes. Uh, yeah. Yeah. It's just, it's great. I almost was like, oh, how much of this section can I actually put as a sentence? <laughs> I know. I was like, this entire two pages is is amazing. Um, so then we get into uh, catching back up with our boy, Briss Bedict who, I love this scene. He's like, let's go figure out what's going down down here in the uh, <laughs> the old, uh, I don't know. Tunnel, the, tunnels, the sinking Yeah, wing. the like, the sewer system is backed up. Yeah. What's the problem? Rats. We got, we got rats. <laughs> lots and lots of rats. 
Uh, and uh, th- this wonderful scene where he's down there and it's all in the muck and they're like, I don't know. There's all this gunk down here. And this dude, Ormley, he died. I don't know. He, the rat he catcher, disappeared. He disappeared. And he's like, blah, here I am. <laughs> uh, it was such like a young Frankenstein moment to me where there's like that scene where they're going they're like oh this is a head that's been dead for however many years and it just goes and like igor's faces they're like ah i'm here it was like yeah. him just lying there floating and him being like oh gosh it's ormley <laughs> may he rest and he's like what's up everybody <laughs> no, like, these, i got them all <laughs> i'm the catcher <laughs> such a swimming ridiculous ridiculous scene incredible he's got all these <laughs> dead rats all around him they're like, you're doing great work, Ormley. Keep it up, buddy. He's like, all right, back down into the gunk. You know, just like, <laughs> just so foul and disgusting. Uh, uh, uh. Amazing. But also, <laughs> uh, the other guy, Grum, uh, is like, you, yeah. And again, just the names. Oh, Ormley and Grum. I know, right? Oh, clean of out course the they work in the sewer. Yeah. <laughs> um, uh, he's like, hey, Bugs Construction has been working on these other things. And, 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 uh, Briss is like, like, what did you say? <laughs> what is that? Interesting. Uh, so uh, uh, <laughs> Briss is like, well, you got that covered. Ormley's not dead. This keep, keep. The, the idea that there's so many rats that no matter how big they made, they expanded the pipe to try to drain it. It filled it, up with rats. It filled up with rats. <laughs> the rats kept plugging the hole no matter what. Mm-hmm. A lot of rats. Anyway, very funny. Um, so uh, Brees goes back to the palace. Um, he, he hears word from the soldiers that, you know, there was murder on the seas. Not good. Um, he uh, he passes by some uh, some nobles on his way to go meet Nifidas, the first eunuch uh, in his chamber, in his office. And uh, Nifidas is like, hey, man, tell me about what, how. Well, we- one of them, the, the only like standout person that he really passes is the queen's consort. Right. Which was, uh, uh, I really liked that, you know, we met the king's consort and then the queen's right. consort is like a sexy little thing that she like sleeps in other people's beds as well. And it's like dubious whether or not the queen knows right. about uh, him sleeping around. Um, yes. which I just like as a as a possible little nugget for the, yeah. the future. There's a lot of uh intrigue. Uh, yes, court drama mm-hmm. there. Um but yeah, Nifidas is like, tell me about the, there's been murders on the sea. Tell me about what people think about the sea. Mm. And he's like, Oh man, a lot of different ideas about what the sea is. Uh the uh, Tisty Dur think the sea is like the realm of darkness. They're all about darkness. They love darkness. And obviously the dark water. I was like, that's a really, yeah, of course it's dark in the water. If you're a fan of darkness, you probably think the sea is pretty rad because it's super dark. Mm-hmm. Made sense to me. Uh, and they're like, that's where Ghislaine, you know, it's, darkness is home for Ghislaine. Uh, he's like, uh, meanwhile, uh, other people think the, uh, the sea is a, a giant beast with e- arms that extend and those are rivers. I was like another really cool, just throwaway idea <laughs> for Erickson. Just awesome. Uh, mm-hmm. the Narek think the sea is the underworld. Uh, and the, the theory, they, they're like, hey, I don't believe in anything. We don't believe in anything except money. So mm-hmm. they fear the sea, but they don't worship it. Yeah. It's punishment. Yeah, yeah exactly. Well, the drownings. Yeah. Right. Uh, we we find out that uh, the Lether were part of the first empire, which is interesting. Uh, and they were uh, where the, the the holds were first discovered. And then uh, Nifidas is like, okay, here's the thing. Uh, there's this elder god named Male. I remember Male from the prologue. Yes. Interesting. He's the lord of the seas and the dweller below. And uh, we think that Hanan Mosag somehow is using mail to cause all this uh, death on the sea. What we need you to do, well, the king, not me, I'm just the eunuch. The king <laughs> wants you, at Briss, to go and w- awaken an elder god yourself. Yeah. S- sweet. He's like, <laughs> so uh, do I go uh, see Seda? Like, how quickly he's like, all right. Yeah, All right, like, I guess that's what the king wants. I'm the king's. I'm the king's guy. Champion. Yeah. Champion. 
<laughs> yeah, I can do what the king says. Awaken an elder god. All right. I, I, I assume I can do that. <laughs> I awaken more elder gods before breakfast than more people do all day. <laughs> That's the confidence I'm looking yeah. for in my life. I, so I can, he, yeah, you want me to awaken elder god? Ah, I can do that. I, I can it. do that job. On it. Done. <laughs> Consider it awakened. Um, so he goes and visits his boy Kuru Khan, the Sita, who... Uh, is like, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I got to do that. Oh, by the way, uh, here's a <laughs> drink. Drink that. He's like, oh, this magical potion? Sure. Oh, it's terrible. He's like, no, that's, that's what, just what potion? spoiled milk. Yeah. <laughs> Amazing. Like, oh, I thought you might like it. Nah, I guess you didn't. Bummer. You didn't like it? Oh, don't worry. You'll puke it up if, you, if it's not good for you. <laughs> <laughs> so good. I laughed so hard when so I good. read that bit. He's like, <laughs> what a how- weirdo. I just adore that that is... Nothing. Moving on. Moving it's on. It's the best. It's the best. But I also, it, it is also illustrative of exactly what we've been talking about with, with Briss, which is, you want me to do it? I'll do it. Pound. All right. I drink the magic <laughs> potion. What happens next? He's like, oh, no, that was just like my foul, <laughs> disgusting milk that I left it was in the ex- corner. Like a, like a food experiment. I'm, I'm a bit of a foodie. I'm trying some new things. <laughs> so good. He's like, what happens if I, it's not good for me? Oh, you'll puke. <laughs> Really funny. Um, so uh, uh, they walk down, in, you know, uh, to the tiles again. And they have another funny exchange where he's like, um, why me? Why does the king want me? And he's like, no idea. You, you, I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. He's you're like, the, you're the you're king's guy? I guess. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Is there something special about me that makes me able to do it? Not that I'm aware of. <laughs> Very funny. You know? Um, He's like, uh, y- you can improvise, I guess. You can figure it out as you go. He's like, what am I supposed to, how do I wake in an elder god? And he's like, Gah. yeah. He's like, oh, by the way, look over there. Poof, pushes him over, falls Just into. Just dunks him down one of the tile holes. Tile hole. Get in the tile hole. Well, this is something that I thought was interesting. Because yeah. he like thwops him down there, right? Yeah. He describes him as like grabbing his harness and like ripping Shucking. him over his shoulder. Yeah. But then once he's down there, and it is down there because he's like, oh, I'm recognizing that I'm underwater, but the breath I breathe is in the tile room. Right. So it's some, did he grab his spirit and throw his spirit mm. down there? But also we previously saw these, this, these holds in one of these Azath houses and people definitely, definitely tumbled. Right, right. But well, he, they, there is that exchange where he's like, you're going to be you're going to have like an astral projection of you. And he's like, well, am I going to have my weapons? He's like, I don't know. How, I don't how know. do you astral project how yourself? How good's your imagination? Yeah. Whatever <laughs> you think yourself should have, you have. He's like, but, well, I want my weapons then. He's like, well, then you'll have them. He's like, are they going to do any good down there? I, don't, I have no idea. But like, is this tile room different than the Azath tile room then? I because think those people, it is. I, I think it was a, Fiddler and everybody. They like fell, right? And then they were they were out, or their bodies still back there, just imagining wars. Yes, I think these tiles are different tiles. Different. This is well, the, he, this he is the Cerebro one, tiles. Yeah, I, I, that's how I imagine it too. He he uh, he. They fall into a specific one. It's yeah. the Dol- Dolman tile, right? Yeah. So he's going to a specific place, which I don't think is like in a Zath house. It's not, it's a different thing, right? Yeah. And the Zath house tiles, th- those were a Zath. Because somebody pointed out in our uh, comments, comments and thank you for this, whoever you were, um, that the the houses are to the deck of dragons uh, as the holds are to the tiles. Right. So we're dealing with holds and tiles now, not houses right. and, and cards. And the deck. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, okay, yeah. okay. Okay, so um, yes, he's he's he plunges into the tile. Then we we cut over to uh, talk to our boy Tehol, favorite character, top tier, who uh, ha- has another wonderful scene. I, I am confident every time we check in with Tehol, I'm going to love it. Um, <laughs> confident. Yeah. Uh, Bug is like, He's just like, they ha- their interaction is so fun because Bug is like, I've done a terrible job making your pants. He's like, no, they're great. Look great the pants. He's same like, length. <laughs> yeah. He's like, but the color's yellow and gray. It's it's awful. He's like, I, I think you did a fantastic job. 
<laughs> it's like a like the best manager, yeah. you know? Yeah. No, and you know, this isn't my vision, but it's like I would make lateral changes, <laughs> lateral changes. This is exactly what we needed, exactly what we needed. It's also like when you give your mom – when you're seven and you give your mom <laughs> – the the thing you made for Mother's Day, you know, and she's yeah. like, "I will wear that every day. I wear it every single day, and it's but, hideous." But, but she, she wears it, it because you made it. She means it. Yeah, she means it. Um, a mask, perhaps. <laughs> how dare you? How dare you? I don't stop thinking about it. <laughs> <laughs> I sent you the picture, right? Yeah, you did. Yeah, it's so good. Fair enough. <laughs> um. Also, that we find out that their their little plan that we had heard, heard about of faking the suicide went off without a hitch. Garen Eberich uh, bought it. Angie. Yeah. He's not happy. Mm-hmm. Not happy. He does not suspect foul play. He, uh, he also did not find the money. And it's funny. They're like, oh, he lost all that money. He's like, well, he didn't actually lose it. He just didn't, he just get, didn't get richer. It. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Very funny, though. And he's like, uh, okay, let's go upstairs or go downstairs because Shirkalali's here. Uh, or no, and they're on the she's rooftop. She's like, I'm still. here. Yeah. Yeah. She, she climbs up to she's the not roof. Supposed she to, does. They're like, we should chill out because she's going to be here. We got an yeah. appointment at midnight. And she's like, I am here. And he's like, way <laughs> early. That's fine. That's fine. Yeah. It's very uh, funny. The whole like being early thing is a very funny little detail to put in. It's yeah. very funny. And she's uh, like, what? You said to be here at midnight. And he's like, it's two hours until midnight. She's like, yep. <laughs> it's very funny. I uh, The end of the scene is very interesting too. And she's like, well, I guess I better crawl back down the wall yeah. so I don't go out the door that I never went in for like the spies that are out there. And Tejo's like, spies? And she's like, yeah, my little friend keeps eating them. Like she yeah, keeps she's killing them for all the spies you. And- Giving them to the Azath house, like pushing them underground. <laughs> yeah. So how many has she done? Oh, lots. <laughs> so okay. many. Single-handedly keeping that thing alive. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, but I, I think it's interesting. We never return to Tay Hall. Tay Hall just kind of goes, what? And yeah. then this, it's over. We never right. get back to, is that just like he's surprised that the little girl's killing people? Is he surprised that they're spies? Like, what was, where was his surprise really born in that moment? I see what you're asking. Yeah, I think I think he's I think it's the revelation that a lots of people are trying to spy on me and b there's been lots of murders <laughs> and <laughs> and uh they're, they're feeding, done by the girl. You know, yeah, yeah, the little girl. Yeah, the adorable little girl is murdering many men. Adorable people. little Sam B, huh? Also, I don't want to skip over the th- thing which I did skip over Another beautiful detail of the tea. He's like, oh, this tea. What, what did you make it out of? <laughs> yeah. Wool. The wool. He's like, the yellow or the, the gray? He's like, yeah. gray. Oh, oh, excellent. Perfect. Then <laughs> I would not drink the w- yellow wool tea. <laughs> He's like, is it poisoning us? He's like, only a little bit. Ah, He's like, delicious perfect. Then. Delicious. Cheers. <laughs> so ridiculous. Every little thing. Yeah. Ugh. Delightful. Delightful. Okay, then we're back to Briss, and uh, he is on the ocean floor, breathing regular air in this kind of crazy uh, between place, the upside down. Um, And this is a really fascinating scene as well, because he's confronted by this guardian who's like, I must fight you. Yeah, well, well, first we like, we see what he sees. So he walks in the. Do, what are they called? Dolmens. The dolmens are there, mm-hmm. which I kind of picture as stalag mites, right? I think they're, they're like, like sarcophagi almost, like standing on their end, aren't they? Well, I, my impression like was monoliths? that like the fact that he saw like these dolmens, he was that was his way of being like, oh, this used to be above ground. It's all underwater right. now. Yeah. And so I pictured it almost like uh, rock formations you'd see in like the Badlands. Like, mm. I forget the name of those things. There's like special yeah. words for them. Um, yeah, they have a name. Yeah. I pictured them as like rock, sort of natural rock formations from the ground that sort of stack up. I forget the mm-hmm. name of them. Somebody will get in the comments. Um, and then it's got creatures that he in his brain is like, oh, these demons are sort of embedded in, in it. And they have- They're like- fulcral sail though, right? Is that what you got? The tentacle? 
I, no, I, they're like multi-limbed and. So some uh, are. I are thought they, all they were, the same? I thought it was fork roll of sale. That's why I was like, oh, it's those things that we keep getting hinted at. Oh, but I could I, be wrong. I thought I remember that it showed there's like some, like some kind of lattice work that showed uh, tentacles or something that had spikes on the end of every tentacle. My right. brain was like a Cthulhu. Um, I th- I had that thought too, but I, there was po- one where it's describing it as having segmented arms, which yes. I'm like. So but there was a couple. There's different ones, so I don't think they mm. were all the same. But okay. I could be mistaken. Um, but they're it bended into this rock, and then he walks and he sees one is open, some kind of right cavity that this thing was in. This the silver lace work that had trapped it is free, yeah. and in that moment, the guardian. So it's like, you're coming back for another one. So somebody's right. been here already. Free this thing that we assume is the demon that the quote unquote demon that's been out in the world. And then he turns and he's like, not me, baby. What's yeah, going the on? thing is already bleeding through its gauntlets. It's like, I must destroy you. And, and Bruce is like, not today, bro. Uh, <laughs> he, he, he's well, like, zip, zip, rip to shreds. The, the sword gets stuck in the ground. And the guard is like, I can't, I can't. <laughs> <laughs> well, the other thing about it is I, I believe that the Guardian didn't exist until that thing was freed. So the thing got freed and then something was like, oh, I have to put this Guardian here now. And now mm. I, for, I had it in my brain. Now it's gone. And so the Guardian was like, I'm here now because that guy is free. We're not letting it anymore go. Oh, yeah. Yeah. No, you're right about that. Yes. <clears throat> but I forget um, who put the Guardian there. I, like immediately forgot who it was uh well he so bris calls out for mail he's like mail i'm here i'm yeah. doing the thing that the king told me to do mm-hmm. and the guardian's like there's no mail no mail here mm-hmm. uh forward your mail somewhere else um <laughs> terrible no reason to even say that um and uh so the idea being that these Gods have died or were dying off, and the, these dolmen were like their little safekeeping, so they didn't die anymore. They were protected in, like, trapped in carbonite um, to be s- safe here. Mm. And the reason they were being they were dying off is because nobody remembered their names. And mm-hmm. if you're a god and no one remembers your name, it's like a fate worse than death. Yeah. Yeah. You are no longer a god. You are yeah. no longer. You have no power. So they were like put in stasis almost to be like when somebody we're gonna I'm gonna remember all your names and you're gonna be here and we're gonna keep you safe. Mm-hmm. And then uh, I, what I love about this scene is Briss, you know, defeats him in in combat and then like has all this compassion for him. It's like, mm-hmm. hey, bro, I'm sorry I stabbed you so hard. I'm sorry. I really got you. I really. I'm just awesome at sorting. I took the W and you really, you did bad. Yeah. But I didn't But you know what? You could do better do next this? time. Yeah. Do ne- <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. He's like such a good swordsman, but also a good sportsman. Yeah. That's that's the most important part <laughs> <laughs> <It's> so, <laughs> about he, sorting. He goes up to him and he's like, here's the information. I didn't want to do this. I'm not that guy. I'm not yeah. the guy that it seems like I am. And so he's like, take my sword. And this is the fact that the guy's like, I – if I release both of my hands from this sword, I'm going to fall down and I'm going to yeah. be gone or whatever. And he goes, like, you only one need hand, bro. one. It's, one. it's light. This is a light sword. And he it's grabs easy. it. And he's like, what? It weighs like nothing. And I'm like, this who made your sword? <laughs> 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 who made your sword? That person sucks. That sword is bad. <laughs> yeah. uh, and then he like cuts his hand and he. Well, he says, I need blood. I need, I need, the, I, in order to have, uh, you know, not die, I'm bleeding. I need blood. He's mm-hmm. like, I got blood. I got so much blood. He's like, if I take your blood, it's bad for you. He's like, well, what if we stop? What well, if you only take a little bit? And he also said, like, I need blood. If I defeat somebody, I take their blood. That's like decent blood. But if I take <laughs> your blood, like willingly offered living blood, it's, you're just going to be crazy. You don't even know what you're offering. And he's like, it's fine. I'm sure this is going to be what fine. What if you just have a sip? Just yeah. a sip. So have like, a sip your whole body. <laughs> Yeah. Uh-huh. So slices his hand, gives the guardian his blood, and also, and the guardian's like, "Okay, you want names? 
I'll give you names. All the names. It's like drinking from An the fire Encyclopedia names. of names. Yeah. It's like, ah, names. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> names and stories and histories and more than he can like manage to digest. And then yeah. he, I guess, releases and then like the the effort that he expended just going through that, I guess, just ended his astral projection or whatever. Yeah. He wakes up and uh, Kuru Khan is like, that's a lot of blood. You, you lost a lot of blood, but You lost all, basically all of your all blood. All your blood. You, I, you left with blood. You arrived no blood. <laughs> and he's like, but I got so many names. I can't think of any of them right now. <laughs> yeah. But I will sift through them and I will find names. <laughs> he said, I got them in here. It's going to take some work. I'm also exhausted because of the lack <laughs> of blood. <laughs> Uh, so then we have this lovely scene with our buddy Bug, mm-hmm. who uh, is going and doing some like extracurricular work. <laughs> he's just got he's got a side hustle, you yeah, know? as an uh, doing some actually some charity work, some uh, you know not for profit <laughs> uh, embalming, you know, yeah. just like side embalms, you know. <laughs> I do that too. I don't I don't brag about it. But. <laughs> Uh, it's, uh, interesting that this is like the second, like, uh, it's not as deep as the one with the coins, but like interesting to see like another sort of death tradition. Yeah. Uh, yeah. so soon in the book, I wonder if this is going to be sort of a repeating motif of seeing these different cultures sort of celebrate or honor their dead. Well, I also think that, you know, this really does illustrate the, this sort of, um, you know, allegory for capitalism and the, you know, the Lothari are so obsessed with wealth and generating money and debt and all that stuff. I mean, it is clearly an indictment of capitalism in a large sense in this novel. And here we have such a beautiful uh, expression of how that hurts the you know the, the poor mm-hmm. <laughs> frankly and it, him coming to this basically these little kids you know pull him through the street they're like hey hey come please he, you know he does this he, he offers off his services for free sometimes to people who can't pay mm-hmm. and they bring him to this grandmother who uh w- you know was taking care of six orphaned children six orphaned neric children and their parents, the reason they're orphans is because their parents died of a fever that was easily healable if they had the money. Yeah. But the healers were like, you don't have the money. I'm not doing it. I mean. Like, oh, it's America. It's America. Uh, yeah. And Can't then this pay? Gr- well, I'm sorry. You can die from something that's easily curable. And this grandmother, if I read correctly, died because she was sort of like caught in like a rage crossfire of uh, J- whatever his name is, Garen Eberich. Garen Eberich. Yeah. she asked like for money. Ma- oh yeah, and he's she, she was like, "Hey, can I have some coin?" He's like, "No, you die." Yeah, St- he like, well, he didn't do it, but he got like two of his guards both to stab her. So she stabbed twice for asking for some coin. Yeah, crawled her way home to be with the her the grandchildren. That part was heartbreaking. The yeah. the notion that she did this superhuman act of crawling home simply so they didn't think she abandoned them Mm. like she is dying she's bleeding out she has these mortal wounds she shouldn't be able to do this and somehow she wills herself to crawl like 300 steps or whatever it was yeah back you know just just so she can die in their presence so they know she didn't just disappear Mm -hmm. utterly heartbreaking and beautiful um and bug is like a cool character Cool character, yeah. yeah. Agreed. You you get this revelation that oh he's he's a just this decent wonderful person, mm-hmm. and all he's there to do, all they want is his blessing. And he's like, oh, I don't do blessings. I'm just the guy that embalms the. I'll bury the body for you. That's they're like, no, no, no. Please, we need someone to bless her. Beautiful. An, uh, blessing is like another thing that's happened. Like, well just twice in these chapters but in the yeah. in the book like how serious blessings are right uh, what they can do a, a blessing has power yeah, yeah yeah it's uh 
and after you know that scene sort of ends when we loop i don't know if it's right after like if we loop back to bug but he's like you know doing all the embalming that was fine but i'm exhausted from the blessing part yeah so it's right. like why we don't know who bug affiliates with in this like pantheon of greater and lesser gods goddesses whatever but we like just the fact that he gave a blessing and yeah. it took something out of him it's like there's some right who who is with bug mm -hmm. yeah. what is with bug it's it's interesting we also have this new character un who shows up at the end who is you know related to the grandmother and he's like who did this and you get a feeling like oh un is maybe going to go after he seems like a big strapping young dude maybe he's going to go after garen eberrecht in some way mm -hmm. so i felt like that was kind of foreshadowing of yeah. something um then we get <laughs> Del another delightful character introduced introduced Selush Salush Salush I got I Salush it. Selush Salush I like Salush um this is the person that Tehal knows uh an old associate of bugs from the uh from the embalming circles you know they got a, <laughs> a, like a secret handshake and a club and a newsletter uh -huh. you know embalmers weekly yeah. um but she's the sexy embalmer. <laughs> yeah, she's got she's got her own side hustle. Uh, she she comes up with some sick uh, <laughs> skincare products. Let's say, you know, look this whole scene. So they're there and they're taking uh, a, a lolly. What's what's something a lolly? Uh, Zombie girl, shirk -a, shirk a lolly. They're taking shirk a lolly to get like. What she wants. She's like, I want to look normal, but still be dead. But also, I want to feel things. She wants that glow up. Uh, and, you know, Salush can provide <laughs> all of the above. And we finally, you know, see a word in the book that I've only seen floating around the Discord. Oh, yes. Everybody has been ominously saying, you're going to learn what it is. You're going to learn what it is. Yo, so here's what I got to know. <laughs> Whose username was Corbolo Dom's Oodaloo? <laughs> Is that now translated to Corbolo yep. Dom's vagina worm? Is that what <laughs> I'm hearing? Like surrogate vajage? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Mm. It's like, let me tell you, gross. Gross. Utulu. <laughs> Utulu. Uh, concept. Um, this is the magical parasite that can be applied to uh to shirk to give her back her her pleasure center uh but it also could poison her brain and it needs to be fed daily nice I know that's nice. <laughs> yo girl same same <laughs> but like, it's like oh it could poison your brain but that's okay we're gonna put different poison in your brain yeah. That's Other the poison. worm poison. The Utilu's natural predator. We're going to extract poison from that, put that in your brain so that you don't become a complete Utilu hound. You know oh what I'm saying? Oh my God. So funny. And like, <laughs> just the scene of her incredible. being like, yo, can it be like, like, I already feel like hungry. Can it be fed something else? And she's like, ooh, experimentation. I love that. It's like this like relationship with this worm <laughs> thing. Oh, so ridiculous. Yeah. And I love Salush because she's she's like got this mad scientist and she's like a mad scientist of fashion. You know what I, I mean? I picture like a combination of Edna Mode and Yzma from The Incredibles and uh, The Emperor's New Groove character. That's where my brain is at with this, with Salush. Just an awesome, awesome scene. Like just the, her description of Salush where she literally like puts toxic venom on her face to, you know. I mean, to, I, that's like, you know, yeah. people do that IRL yeah. too. I mean, Botox is poison, right? <laughs> yeah. It's not far from the truth. Mm, so funny. Yeah. Oh, so we're, it's not only that we're, we're in America, we're specifically in LA is what I'm <laughs> this hearing. Is, <laughs> there is uh, Lethele. Lethele. La Thalé. La Thalé. La um, <laughs> pretty good. Pretty good. Uh, so then this is um, the, the little scene next is, is the one you mentioned with Bug coming back exhausted. Like, yeah. oh, I've had, a, I've had a night. I've been up all night. 
Yeah. Uh, it's almost dawn. And Shand, one of the three uh, hardcore girls, is there like, what's going on? Where we're are doing you? Is sleeping with, <laughs> <laughs> sleeping with Ublala Pung all day long. I, I love that, how that sentence, is, they're like, he's like, where's your bodyguard? And she's like, oh, that guy. He's probably in this girl's bed or this girl's bed. Not mine. Tonight. <laughs> yeah. It's like it. It sounds like when you're reading it, like she's judgment. Like, oh, I can't even. But she's also getting down with you, blah blah. She yeah. down with the pung. Get down with the pung. You down with the OPP? Other people's pung. <laughs> um, uh, she. Uh, it's also funny how we left the last time we saw Ublala pung. He's like, please don't leave me with these ladies. And now he's like, I mean, this is what I. This is my life. This is you know, uh, you this know is my life. I do what I um, must. Yeah, she's like, what are you doing? He's like, don't worry about it. We're basically undermining the entire economic system. Be patient. Well, uh, yeah. And I like, she's like, Ugh. okay, here's the one sentence, very clear explanation of what's happening. She's like, why doesn't anybody just tell me that? He's like, it doesn't, <laughs> yeah. that's just, it's not a part of the plan. It doesn't matter. <laughs> You'll know what you need to know. Now that's get right. out of my face. Just lady. go hang out with your bodyguard. Yeah. Leave me alone. <laughs> uh, and then we have this really funny moment too where Tay Hall is like, I gotta, I gotta leave. I don't. There's all this Utalu business. I'm out of here. I'm gonna take a. I'm gonna go stand on the balcony. And there's this new character. That, like, I, I don't think it's above Erickson to introduce an entire new character for just this moment. Mm -hmm. Patterunt, which he's awesome, <laughs> hilarious, just over all of it. Just yeah, uh, these people and their things. He's like, uh, you want to go? Let's go. We'll go down to the restaurant. We'll, we'll have some uh, delicious tea. It's going to make you puke. You're going to love it. It's also, <laughs> it's used as an in insecticide. Yeah. Drink it. <laughs> he says something in that time about like how like uh, you can't like fight the body. The outside of the body is always going to tell you what's at your soul. And Tay Hall like looks at him and he's like, not an appealing man. He's like, mm, yeah, interesting that you say that. <laughs> yeah. Very funny. Yeah. Very funny. Yeah. 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 The, your, your external reveals your internal. He's like, Oh yeah, you, you, you buddy, you're gonna tell, say that. Tell me about it. You're tell gonna make that comment. It. All right. <laughs> um, and uh, yeah, and uh, so you know, Shirk, she looks, uh, she looks like a, a living person. She thinks she looks a little, let's say, lady of the night ish, but. Uh, <laughs> Her, Which, she has a like the a, way she described it. I was like, yeah, cool, like traveling duds. And then, and then she's like, I look like a sex worker. And I was like, what? I thought you looked cool in my brain. And not that that you can look cool and also right. be a sex worker, but like I wasn't picturing what I guess she's seeing. <laughs> there's a there's a pump in her stomach to to like give her good breath. Like the pump has cinnamon and myrrh in it. It's so. So funny. So interesting. I love the description of like how to make a zombie seem like a person, but also like more than a person. Yeah. I would pay a decent amount of money to have something that makes my breath always taste like cinnamon. <laughs> I feel like that's like a it's cosmetic device. Oh my gosh. No matter what, wake up first thing in the morning. I'm not a gum, yeah. I'll choke. Okay, fair enough. Wake up in the morning, no, cinnamon choke. breath. I'm here for it. All you got to do is be cursed when you die. And then Perfect. Done and done. All right, back to uh, Briss. Um, he is uh, still low on blood, not feeling great. But uh, we get our first glimpse at the king himself, mm -hmm. who strolls in. Kurokan is still kind of uh, convalescing. Briss Nifidas is like, "Hey, the king wants to talk to you." He's like, "No, I have no blood." <laughs> He's like, "No, no, it's cool. He's here." Right, he's outside the door. He's coming yeah. in right now, and I am delighted by this king. He is mm -hmm. so opposite to what w I expected the king to be, especially the king who is purported to be destined to become emperor. You mm -hmm. know, he's like anti-king. He's the, you know, he, hello fellow peasants. <laughs> yeah, he he got kicked in the face by a horse as a kid. He mm -hmm. could have easily been healed. He's like, no, I'm going to leave my face asymmetrical. <laughs> I'm going to droopy eye it up. It's okay. I don't care. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna, I don't, I don't, I don't got he, time for this. He's not in like regal robes. Dressed he like legit is like yep. dressed like he's uh, going to the market or whatever. Yep. And he uh, comes in and he's like, what's going on? 
What's what's the deal? Is my is, is my wife the queen being a problem? I figured. How about my idiot son? Yeah, him too. Problem? Ah, these people. All right. I, I also like that he's like, okay, I'm coming to see you right now because I know that the queen is with her consort, and so she's gonna be passed out. Yeah. Both of them are gonna be passed out. So their spies are gonna be making sure that they're not like in trouble over in her quarters. So this is like the safest time for me to talk to you, even though yeah. they'll probably be spies and they'll get back to me. Tell me what they say, even though I know it's going to be this. Yeah, exactly. <clears throat> so, I, I love this exchange. I love his, his sort of been there, done that. I don't, I don't, I'm not playing this game. Like you feel like the king is the king of playing the games, but yeah. he just comes in. He's like, I'm not playing any of these games. Just tell me what's going on. Tell me what, you know, let's figure this out. And, Briss reveals a pretty big piece of information, which is I made it so that Yadur can no longer enslave demons. They did one. That's what killed our boats. Mm -hmm. I memorized the name so they can't do that anymore. Pretty interesting. Uh, and then we end the scene with this, uh, this kind of ominous uh, saying that Kuro Khan is like, the world is ended by a kind word. Mm -hmm. Which I thought was really cool as well. Uh, there, there was another, there's another, there's the world is ended on, on a kind word. Uh, and then he's like, well, that's why the, you know, the witches in the market are like, <laughs> so they're just using that as an excuse for everybody. Yeah. To like to be mean to everybody. Right. Um, but then there's another sentence that comes after that that's like, the like clothes that are colorful are like hiding something, something. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I can't yeah. remember what it yeah. is, but that's the one they're like, from the same witches? Are we sure? Like, there's like a moment there, but. Yeah. Oh, right. Yeah. It's kind of contradictory. Those two witches are saying the same thing. It's like, yeah, whatever's convenient at the time. Yeah. Yeah. So that's the end of chapter six. Chapter seven, we check back in with our girl, Saren Pedak, who has been in the waiting room for the, for the meeting <laughs> for five days. They're waiting like, oh, for the Zoom host to let her enter. <laughs> that's right. This meeting could have been an email, Sarah says. <laughs> uh, they have been, uh, this power play, we all know it. We all know the power play where mm -hmm. a person makes you wait, is, is late, makes you wait so that they seem important. That's what she thinks Hannah and Mossog has been doing. Just like, uh, yeah, I'll get to it. Usually they have a single day of welcome and waiting before the thing. They've been waiting five days. Not cool, Hanan Mosog. <laughs> uh, but most importantly, they're waiting five days, and that's annoying. But the Narek tribes people, the uh, Baruch's slaves that he keeps, uh, is part of their culture that they must be welcomed before they can let themselves exist, really. Yeah, and they, so, they're, they're not people unless they're happy people. <laughs> yeah, and so they are starving themselves. And they are, they are going to die because nobody has given them an official welcome. Yeah. And, and uh, all she wants is Hull it. Benick to do it. She's like, Hull, do it. And he's like, I am. Uh, I can't. I'm not going to do it. Yeah. Ugh. Hull. This guy. So, yeah. Hull. I don't know what to make of him. Yeah. Because uh, the next scene, we'll get to it. Next scene is weird, too, where he's just like, he's just like poking the tiger. Um, but Mayan walks in. Idur, we know her uh, from the Sengars, uh, mm -hmm. the Sengar bro brothers, She's wife of fear. She's fiancé. Yeah, or, yeah, you're right. The fiance. betrothed. A indeed. And she's like, hey, what's up? Uh, Sarah's like, can you do me a solid? These people are dying. All they need for you is to be like, welcome. And she's like, I'm going to do you one better. I'm not just going to welcome them. I'm going to bless them. And Sarah's like, she's wait, like, no, no, too much. Mm -hmm. Too much, too much. <laughs> <laughs> so interesting that the moment she says that, every like everybody's like, she's gonna bless him. Like, let's like rein it in. Like, yeah. that's like another moment where I'm like, blessing is like, yeah. I mean, we saw it with uh, Ganus and his like, am I gonna bless the House of Chains? Am I gonna like right. welcome them, recognize? Well, them, like, but he was blessing specifically the master of the deck, right? So you feel like that is like a the, blessing. The that matters. Special blessing powers, right? But it feels like, no, maybe blessings in general are powerful. Yeah. yeah. And what I think is interesting, so she goes over and she blesses them. And then Sarah, like, 
all like even the Nair people are like, what <laughs> just <blessing> happened? Us? <laughs> Seriously? Like they're all like stunned by that. And Saren's yeah. like, well, at least they're gonna like get up and listen to Baruch now. And the fact yeah. that she specifically called out that now that at least they'll listen to Baruch, I wonder if they will. I wonder if like that blessing is like given them some kind of agency or like if it tie like if you're well, given some of your power away like maybe it's not coming from like a god like mm. from like what i said earlier with bug like oh who like right. that's like a very earthly idea of like blessing somebody but like maybe she's like gifted them something inadvertently well, they're by described doing this. as having like all this energy after that you yeah. know they're moving around like you know all excited dinner time so, yeah exactly <laughs> mm -hmm. um and th there's also this this mention of the fact that like oh there might be enough spiritual power residual in the land that when she blesses them it'll like conjure a spirit which you know i didn't i don't exactly wrap my head around ex what what that means but i do think that there's some Implication Something there that will come there. to fruition. I yeah. know that, like, uh, in the war with uh, uh, in the uh, Dead House Gates, you know, they had talked to those earth spirits, and it was like they're attracted to like power happening. So maybe that there's right. just power is occurring, and so spirits right. show up. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, also, Saren is like, uh, you know, um, Mayan it says, Oh, Featherwitch, go tell him I'm gonna be late. And Saren's like, Featherwitch, what Featherwitch? Featherwitch? Her, her name's Featherwitch? <laughs> Sorry, who why, why, Who gave her that name? <laughs> yeah. That seems important. Yeah. Then we cut over to Udenas, who's uh, creepily watching from the corner, like scaling fish. <laughs> Just <laughs> watching in the corner. He's acting weird because he's got, you know, wither inside him still. And it, it feels like he's really, uh, he's really kind of changing a bit. Um, And... He says, oh, yeah, this is the part where he's basically saying the Edor blessing could sanctify the ground and mm -hmm. draw ancestral spirits because Mayan has a pure bloodline. and Or this is Fillerwitch saying it. Yeah. And Mayan has a destiny. And also, and she's like, also, she's a, oh, what? If she's. Uh, a, yeah, yeah, like yeah. A, a virgin is the idea. But that would mean. <laughs> but everybody's like, oh, doubt it. <laughs> Well, I think the implication is, did she cheat on her betrothed? Yeah, yeah. and people don't know. Uh, this whole scene is also very interesting because of like the sort of uh, romantic tension between Featherwitch and Udenas. <laughs> and Udenas yeah. is like, you're talking to me. And you talk <laughs> to me in your dreams every night. And she's like, shut up. You don't know my brain. And then like, I love how it's described that they're like having this conversation, but she keeps this edge to her. Yeah. And then at some point he like says something and she has like a normal response and it's like feeling herself softening even for like one sentence. She's like, and also you're stupid. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 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 Uh, it's really good. I agree <laughs> that her internal struggle to like, I don't like this guy. Don't like this guy. I do not like I, this I guy. I can't. We are like of different like yeah. statures. Both yeah. of us are slaves for these other people, but I'm like a god among. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and there's all, you know, all of this, uh, as I mentioned at the, at the top, all this sort of philosophical discussion of what being a slave means and, mm -hmm. and how, you know, f what freedom is or isn't. Yeah. I um, pulled some of that from my favorite sentences. Uh, we may have pulled the same okay. thing. It's, it's, I think it's beautiful. <laughs> yeah. Um, so then we're back to, uh, Saren and Hull and, um, the, the Narriker busy busy bees because they've been blessed they're like sweet uh and they talk about the Narek creation myth they're like what do the Narek even believe in and, and hull is like well they were here since the first landing which is mm -hmm. a thing that we're hearing about for the first time but i assume it's part of the first empire or the first peoples i think you know? they've like alluded to it a couple times that like people came to this land Right. Was like, but I've never, yeah. heard, I don't think we've heard it called first landing. Right. And he talks about lizards and dragons and ice. And I'm like, oh, Kachin Chamale. They're like so silly. Soul taken. <laughs> jacket. Oh, I love how Saren is like, 
People believe the stupidest garbage. <laughs> <laughs> I like how people are you know, in a world with literal it's literally magic. gods who meddle in the affairs of people. They're still atheists. <laughs> love, There's still people that. who are like those, but those things are dumb. It's uh, the, the, they believe that stuff. I believe in the giant snake person that lives in my spine. <laughs> yeah, <you know>? Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> but hey, again, uh, it tracks to real life. Let's yes. just put it that way. Yeah, yeah. Um, Anyway, but there's also a very interesting thing where they say the Narek believe they were born from a single mother who is Ares. And we've heard about these Ares people before, the aerosol. Yeah. The, the, these are the people that were – that we saw in a previous novel in a time-traveling sort of flashbacky moment where we saw the Daragoth dogs yeah. um, domesticate people. And mm-hmm. those were the Ares, right? The Imas. Mm-hmm. Uh, were, they were the ancestors of the Imas almost, like the first, like almost Cro-Magnon. And they, yeah. And they said something about in this in this sentence, uh, in this section that also piqued my interest of, they said that they was like, the, there was somebody and then that person birthed the person who was actually like everybody's mother. So there's it, like a grandmother and a mother, or are they the same person? Well, it because- made me think of the the Holy Trinity from yeah. Catholicism. You know, yeah. it's like the fa- the Father, Son, the Holy Ghost, but they're also all the same person. Like the Father is the Son, and the Son yeah. is the Father, but they're also distinct the things. Ghost. It's like, does it make sense? No, but that's what it. You know, that's. But they what- described it as somebody who like walks through fire, or like walked among fire, blah blah right. blah. Right. Which. Um, we saw Fiddler do. We right? saw Fiddler do, but I, it, made, it also made me think of uh, like uh, Osirik and, and crew in the like the, right. the subsequent scene. Ah, we'll we'll get there in a bit. But yeah, there's like a lot of things that sort of seems like they're swirling around the same sort of themes. Men and Men and Doris or whatever her name yeah. is, um, and yeah. even those two in the next in the next scene say something about their mother I, I'll, I'll jumping ahead i'll wait but uh, interesting um uh creation story to the narrick that's for sure indeed indeed uh and it's, it, it must tie in because we've heard about these aries people and there was that aries woman that showed up and uh didn't she um isn't she the one that like pulled on who is it troll into her and like stole his seed wasn't that the aries yeah, woman that's, okay so great was she an aries woman that is the woman so. in the next scene that i'm talking about right men right and, men and doris so yes yeah okay well yeah we'll she's get, the we'll get she's there. sister dawn she's the gold yes. girl yes okay great i was like <sighs> it's my i t- okay we'll wait i'll wait i'll wait i'll wait it's yeah. in udinas's vision that i'm talking about yeah the quote unquote vision. Who knows? Which is literally the next the next, the scene. next scene. Uh he, he wither basically so, kind of pulls so him just, into a vision. Just to connect these two scenes, there's yeah. like, you know, Saren and 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 Hull, I believe, talking about like the narrative creation story, and they're all they're just kind of like interesting stuff. People believe whatever, blah, blah, blah. And then it cuts back to Udnas, who's still on the beach, still with the fish, and withers like <laughs> people are look at all these things happening around you and he's like please don't talk to me don't just yeah. st- st- stay in your crevice whatever yeah. and he's like do you want to see a vision he's like i don't and he's like too late and like <laughs> snags him that into was very funny he's like i i, I don't it's like it's already happening <laughs> yeah. very funny and so it like throws him in this vision and he i i forget uh, you probably have it there but there's like some first scene and then it switches and he sees Oscar yeah. talking with he him. sees the the end of the Kachin Chamale and Tisti Wars. Yes. It's like they're fighting. And then uh and then he, it switches to seeing Menendore or Menendor, uh Sakul Ankhadu, which is new, uh-huh. and uh Shaltatha Lore. Yeah. So this is Sister Dawn, Dapple, and yeah. Daughter Dusk. Yeah. Dapple and and they are uh, Sister Dawn and Dapple are dragging Daughter Dusk, who is unconscious, and uh, and then Osric shows up, who's like, "What are you doing? What? Why is she passed out?" And they're like, I, "She, I, we, we were poisoned by Tiam's blood." 
And he's like, that, I don't, that doesn't sound right. <laughs> um, <laughs> and they're like, uh, well, Scabandari uh, wanted Shaltatha to do something, but he didn't come when she screamed for his help. And Osric and is like. And they call him uncle. They call Scabandari uncle. Yes. Yes. So basically, Tiam is the mother of dragons. And and my understanding is Tiam is the the mother referred to in the previous scene. Yes. Because if if you can confirm, because I totally forgot that Menendori was called the heiress woman who got who stole Unas scene seed right. later. Right. But she is that person who was like, was she riding the flaming horse? Or she was definitely like in like a fiery scene when that yeah, happened. Riding a flaming skeleton horse. Yeah, 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 yeah. Flaming yeah. skelly bones. And so she's there. And I was immediately like, well, she's like a person who's like walking through fire. I forgot that she was literally right. described as an heiress woman. Right. Um, and so, and then her and Dapple are both saying like, well, mom, blah, blah, blah. You know what mom did? And Osric's like, your mom died giving birth to you. And she's right. like, yeah. And then was reborn and then died again. Blah, 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 blah. Same yeah. thing over and over and over again. So we're like, so we we heard Saren and Hull talk about like this Narek sort of creation story. And then we're not at that creation, but we are people who are so close to it and part of this Narek line. Yes. So, evidently, Tiam mated with Scabandari to give birth to Shatatha Lore, who mm -hmm. is the daughter, daughter Dusk, okay? Mm -hmm. Which makes sense because Scabandari is father dark, right? Yes. She also mated with Osric to give birth to Menendore and Dapple. Sister Dawn and Dapple. Mm-hmm. So she did, she made it with light and dark. Mm -hmm. And Amanda Rake is involved. <laughs> <laughs> what is, is, uh, uh, was apparently going to try and stop Scavendari from obviously right. stabbing, uh, the other guy. Was is Scavendari's ruin? You know, st betrayed Silchus. Silchus is Animander's brother. Yeah. So we, I assume that Animander was going to try and stop that from happening, but Osric right. held him off so yes, that Scavendari right. could get away. And he, but yes, exactly right. He he let Scavendari escape. That's right. And so Manadari and and Sokol are like, we're going to imprison Sheltatha in an Azath Tower, the same one the Silchus Ruin is in. And Osric's like, that's that's a terrible idea. It's like both of them in one? That's bad. Too powerful, too much, mm -hmm. too few houses. Don't do that. Mm -hmm. And uh, then he flies away. <laughs> <laughs> so, I, you know, <laughs> well, who very, knows? Odd, very <laughs> odd scene. Yeah. Gods being gods. Mm -hmm. um, the... Leosins well think well that there's one there's one other thing that happened there. Yes. Uh if I recall correctly. They were like blah 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 to let uh why am I so bad? To let what's his face get away. Scabandari get away. Yeah. And he's like he it doesn't also at the time even right at this time. So as far as I can tell, this is close after the moment in the prologue. Like in time, this vision that we're mm. seeing is like shortly after the betrayal of Silchus Ruin. Okay. Um, and then doesn't he say something like Scavendari, he's not an issue either. And they were like, What do you mean by that? And he's like, I'll never tell. And then he flies away. <laughs> yeah. He's like, he's been imprisoned or something. Well, my brain was like, is this when he got punched in the head and died? Like, did he was he immediately executed? And then the like his followers oh, are the people that's uh, is it, like is it that his followers have like are the ones who like basically like falsified the records of the betrayal and mm. like who was the betrayer because we he died out, instantly? But we found out who punched him in the face, and it wasn't any of these people, right? Yes, I agree. Yeah. Well, did we find out who punched him in the face? I thought in the stone bowl, they're like, "Oh, I know who punched him in the face." 
D- but and it the, was like this other guy. But I don't think they said. I just thought that they knew who that he got punched in the face. I'm pretty I sure we, we got a name of a person that punched him in the face. Well, I, either way, I didn't get the implication that Osric did the punching, just that he no. knew that something was up with him, Scavendari, in this scene. Yeah. Well, and then and then those the the the, the two the sisters are like, oh, Osric and Rake, they love they just love fighting each other. Yeah. They're just happy to keep fighting forevermore. Yeah. And then they also say, oh, by the way, Sheltatha, who we're dragging along here, she got it on with Draconis. And they gave birth to Lady Envy and Lady Spite. Yeah. Which seems pretty like a pretty big deal because we hung out with Lady Envy a whole bunch already. Mm-hmm. So... A very dense vision. I, want, I don't know what it actually means. I, know. I want it, like, you know, we got maps. Give me the family trees. Yeah. <laughs> give me yeah. the family trees at the beginning of the book. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, okay. I can give it to you right now because it's here in my cheat sheet. Uh, <laughs> Mother Dark birthed Anamander Rake and Darest, who's dead, and Silchus Ruin, who's imprisoned yeah. in a in a house. House. Scavendari, the father of Sh- Shadow, hooked up with Tiam, the mother of dragons, and they had Sheltathalor. She and Draconis got together and had Lady Envy and Lady Spite. Mm-hmm. Father Light has Osric. Osric gets together with Tiam, the mother of dragons. He has Menendore and Sukkul and, and, and Hadu. Osric also has Laoric, who we've been hung, hang out, hung out with in the last book, but mm-hmm. we don't know who his mom is. Uh, also, at, in this scene, that didn't they say something about him, like getting down with Tiam or somebody, and then being like, "Did you call her your sister before or after you were with her?" Yeah, yeah. And so, are they actually sisters, or is this like part of Tiam's rebirth and rebirth and rebirth? Or like, are they not? Did he actually call her his sister? Why would he do that? There's like, right? Yeah, I don't think that we have like the answers to these questions i'm just trying to retain it yeah that's a lot yeah so we're back with uh saren pedak she uh she come uh, comes over to udnas and he's like hey um what's what's going on he's like she's like hey, this feather witch has she been around a while he's like oh yeah long time 20 <laughs> generations she's been casting tiles uh-huh. and he's gonna cast, cast a tile tonight Saren's like, that sounds like a bad idea. And he's like, it's risky, but. <laughs> yeah, we know. Uh, we know. We know. Last time I got my shoulder ripped apart and now I'm kind of a dragon, but <laughs> it's fine. <laughs> kind of a wraith inside me. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Saren goes back to Baruch and Hull and uh, they walk <laughs> over to Hanag Mosag's citadel. And Hanag is like, I don't know what you guys have been waiting for. I already started eating. Ugh. What a jerk. <laughs> like, such an excellent portrayal of just a jerk. Well, he made you wait five days. Why are you guys late? Yeah. Sorry, I was hungry. Sorry, I, can't. I, I can't just. Oh, my blood have sugar food. was low. Yeah. Oh, my, <laughs> my gosh. My blood sugar was low. So I can't just see food and not eat it. Sorry. Horrible. Hilarious. Hilarious. Immediate hate for this person. <laughs> yeah. Total D bag power play. Oh, yeah. Yeah. He's like, all right. And, and Baruch, I, all of a sudden I have like respect for Baruch because Baruch is just laying it out. He's like, hey, what's ha- wh- why'd you murder all the people on the boats? Not cool. We didn't want to do that. And then Hull is in the background just like, pew, pew, pew. Just like, you're, you, you, you slaughtered all those people and they were indebted and that's not cool. I know what you're up to. And meanwhile- Hanag Mosang kind of keeps us cool. And Saren leaves this meeting thinking, oh my gosh, this guy doesn't want a war. Mm-hmm. Uh, and Saren, well, Saren's like kind of dismissed from the meeting. Yeah. As like, it's sort of like you don't get to be around for this, but it's also, she's like relieved. Yeah, I was going like, to say, she doesn't want to be around for it. She's like, I'm out of there. Don't make, don't she, bring me she, into this. She's like, She's like, I won't brought, have she's like, the I info. just brought him here. I don't know. Yeah. She's like, I won't have the information then. That would be interesting yeah. to know. But right. I also am more happy to get away than I am to have the info. 
But yeah, interesting. Yeah. Uh, and then scene, or excuse me, chapter seven uh, basically ends with a giant reading of the tiles that just went over my head. <laughs> I know. <laughs> right before we started recording, I had the book out being like, can, what can I? Because so my understanding of this, she's got the reading of the tiles, but unlike having the Cerebro Lothari high tech room where you could like see it all, she has to just like see them in her head. And go, and here's it. what they are in order. Yeah. That's my yeah. understanding. She, she's I, just saying what she's seeing. But she's it's like, like a, she's a psychic, it. you know, she's, she's, you go into the room, she's got the tarot cards in her head and she's like, yeah, you got them. You got the death card. Yeah. You know, it, but she's just spewing it all out. And I read this and I went, this is a second reading chapter. <laughs> <laughs> this is yeah. get through the whole series or at least this novel, go back and read this chapter again and go, oh, he's literally telling us everything right here. Yeah. I felt the same way. I could sit there and I can go through and try to ingest anything. The one thing that I'm like trying to understand is like halfway through the reading, uh, you know, Unas is in the room and everybody's like watching Feather Witch. And then he looks back and he sees Saren is like back there in the shadows watching what's happening. And she goes and she wants to go stop it from happening. Right. She like goes to try and stop her. Is it just because she like spits blood at some point? Because like, I guess doing this reading takes a lot out of her. Or was there something that she was seeing that she's like, you can't, don't see that? No, I think, I mean, my my interpretation was that she has some information that we do not yet have about what a feather witch is yes and what reading of the tiles could rot mm -hmm. what it what it what it means and i i think we just don't know yet what saren's true concern is but she seems to know something about what feather witches do and what they mean what they're or if this is, is, or I don't know if it's multiple feather witches, or if this, if this, this feather witch has been around forever, if it's this is feather witch and she knows her mm. already, right? Um, so right. the uh, the, I have I have it up here. I know you have it in your guide. Is there like there's like you mentioned that there's like a click through and here's the full breakdown of all the pieces. Yeah, I have not. We read don't want that. that. Yeah. But does it say like a high level like each of the pieces? Because one of well, them is Fulcra, like Fulcra, Fire, Dolmen, and Errant. So we know Dolmen, and we know the Errant is the thing that people keep, you know, cursing to. Oh, yeah. Errant, take or whatever it is. Uh, we don't. I don't really know what Fulcra is. Fire kind of seems self-explanatory in a certain sense. But then she goes through the the holds. There's the Beast hold, the Azath hold. The ice hold, mm -hmm. the dragon hold, and the empty hold, which supposedly came later, and we know that's why Kuru Khan lost his sight because he stared at the empty hold. Yes. So uh, the thing that I think is interesting is, like, as far as we know, we're like some amount back in time because we're before Troll is strapped to the rock. Like just in general in this book. Yes, but there was something that happened in these chapters. Oh, what was it that I was like, oh my gosh. That means it's contemporary. Oh, what was, was it? Was it? It's not the hold of the beast has found twin rulers, is it? That's what made me think of it. Isn't that? Doesn't that mean that T Fanderlay and to me that was like maybe like it has found twin rulers, but like I don't know how time works. I don't know how like future reading works. Maybe they're like, oh, we have found twin rulers in two hundred years. They will be here, or is it mm. contemporary? I don't know. My yeah, thought was that it was a projection. Like a future you could be tone. right. Uh, that was the one thing that stuck out to me. I was like, oh, we had so much of that build up to the beast hold. But the fact that they even know the beast hold. Like by the time yeah. uh, Ganoos and Silver Fox are at, like possibly like they're becoming rulers of the beast hold or whatever. It is those two, right? Yeah. yeah. Um, yeah. They had like, oh, yeah, the, the beast hold had been completely forgotten about. And well, in this, the nobody was like, what's a beast hold? Well, th that's the um, that's the thing that makes me think you're right that we're back in time is because it wasn't they didn't become rulers of the beast hold they were rulers of the house of the beast the beast house and we know oh. holds predate houses right yeah. holds lead to houses so maybe we are in an earlier time because we're talking about holds and not houses not at houses all. Yeah, right? yeah yeah I keep uh, conflating the two certainly well I think they are. 
easy to conflate because I think they are predecessors. You know, one is a predecessor of the other. And mm -hmm. I think now having said that, I could be wrong in that it's not predecessors. It's just two different cultures interpreting the same thing in different ways. Mm -hmm. We're talking about holds. They're talking about houses, but we're fundamentally talking about the same we thing. We are on two different continents. Right. And two completely different cultures that don't interact with each other. True. Right? So I, there's a part of me that's like, oh, are we talking about the same thing at the same time? Or are we talking about something that turns into something else? I don't know. I don't know. I trust that will become clear. Yeah. Um, I agree. That will become clear. Or somebody will correct us. In yeah. The so the things comments. that happen, the hold of the beast is found twin rulers, which Saren says that is impossible, which I think it's interesting that she not only knows what that is, but has some insight into why would that be impossible? I don't know. Right. Interesting thing. Uh, the uh, Azoth hold, it stands besieged. We have already seen that. We know yes. that it's dying. We know it's dying. Yes. Yeah. Ice hold. Um, I don't uh, like dealing with a bunch of ice holds. <laughs> I like that. Uh, <laughs> You're yeah, an ice hold. <laughs> Stupid. <laughs> so dumb. Why do I even say things? I love it. I love it. Um, but something I think is interesting, she she speaks Jaghut, and they're like, what is yeah. Jaghut? But then she says, uh, 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 there's a riven tomb. Corpses lie scattered before the sundered threshold. To me, that sounds like book one. That sounds like, mm. um, what's his face coming out of the ground? The Who tyrant. Knows? The tyrant. But I like yeah. that it says, the ice itself cannot recall the weight of their passage. That just sounds like memories of ice. There's like some kind of memories of ice. Mm, yeah. Memory, mm -hmm. holding memory, whatever. Um, great. Then hold of the dragon. And then talking about how the, the Elaine will destroy all in their past to achieve vengeance. Uh, and then there's like... This this is the stuff that feels like it's like okay we haven't seen this at all then so there's it's just the dragon hold, um, and the empty hold are the two that feel like big big mysteries to me. Yeah, I have no idea what empty hold even means. <sighs> the, the idea that Kurukan stared at it and it stole his eyes is like well that seems pretty powerful and the fact that it like came later. Yeah, you know I'm not clear on and what's... And is, is that the one that was like at the end when they did that tile room at the first and then there's nothing after that? Is that the empty hold that Briss and, and the Seda were looking at earlier? Is that the empty hold and it just reads as nothingness? Yeah. I don't know. I don't I know. Wanna, it's a lot. I want... It is a lot. It is a lot. Yeah. And sorry for going through that. I feel like I needed no, like a gut good. check. I'm like, there are parts that I feel like I understand, Yeah. but I have to talk them out loud to get yeah. to my understanding of them. <laughs> right. Yeah. Good stuff though. Yeah. Interesting, interesting scenes. Um, we do have our, uh, our favorite passages that we're yeah. going to bring up. Uh, I believe I have three. How many of you ha do you have? Uh, I highlighted a bunch, but some of them we already chatted about well, uh, sort of lightly through here. And I think we'll have a couple similar. Yeah, we we're in have chapter overlap. six and seven. Um, I can start. I have one. Um, that that I love. This is from the uh, a passage that we we talked about with reverence at the beginning. This is from right at the beginning of the of chapter six, uh, talking about the 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 idea of the sea itself. Mm -hmm. uh, this goes: <clears throat> ancient spirits rode the currents of darkness far from the sun's light, stirring silts that swallowed history beneath endless layers of indifferent silence. Their powers were immense, their appetites insatiable. All that came down from the lit world above settled into their embrace. The surface of the seas, every sailor knew, was ephemeral. Quaint sketchings across an ever-changing slate, and lives were but sparks, so easily quenched by the demon forces that could rise from far below to shake their beast hides and so upend the world. That was definitely one of mine. So, so good. Oh, so good. So good. Um, 
I'm like so torn between a bunch of mine. I'll say this one quickly just because it's also about the seas. All right. And it's, but it's shorter. Even seas are born only to one day die, Kuru Khan said. Yet the land clings to its memory, and all that it has endured is clawed into its visage. Conversely, at the very depths of the deepest ocean, you will find the traces of when it stood above the waves. That's, that's beautiful. It's mm -hmm. awesome. Yeah. It's like, go to the bottom. <laughs> You'll see yeah. what it used to be. <laughs> uh, this is kind of a funny one that I, I just, it tickled me and I loved it. We talked about it a little bit with Esgara, the king. Uh, <laughs> he's like, all right, here, here, here we go. He goes, first eunuch, your diligence in such matters is legendary, leaving me skeptical of your claims. <laughs> Nonetheless, <laughs> you have my leave, if only that you might ensure your spies are made aware of precisely when her spies make their report <laughs> so that they, in turn, may report to you and you may then report to me. Although what I am to do with such knowledge will no doubt escape me, given that the event initiating these flurries of reporting is none other than the one occurring right now in this room. <laughs> Just love it. He's like, it's so good. You'll spy on her who's spying on me, telling her what we're doing right now in here that I'm witnessing right now. So it doesn't even matter. What are we yeah. even doing all this for? It's so good. Uh, well, uh, since you brought up that scene, I can't help but bring up this. Uh, one between Briss and Seda that we also talked about earlier, but I just love it. So I'm saying this is my favorite moment in the chapters. Uh, you are young, quick witted and resilient. He turned away and scanned the cluttered worktop behind him. Great flux, alas, leaving but one choice. He reached out and picked up a goblet, a pause, a dubious squint at its contents. And then he took a cautious sip. Ah, as suspected, the flux in the composite is due entirely to curdled milk. Briss Bedict, are you ready? The king's champion shrugged. Kuru Khan nodded. I was going to have you drink this. Curdled milk will not harm me, Briss said, <laughs> taking the goblet from the seda. He quickly tossed it down, then set the silver cup on the table. How long? For what? Until the potion takes effect? What potion? Come with me. We shall use the sedans for this journey. <laughs> I did it. What, now what happens? <laughs> Nothing, dude. You just what are you, what are you talking about? You idiot. Let's go, let's go over here. <laughs> just moves just moves on past it. Um, All right. So then here's this one, which I, I assume you also picked. Um, yeah. But I, 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 if you I want you to read me, it because like, you have a better voice than I have. <laughs> <laughs> That's not true. But I appreciate it. Um, this is uh, this is Udnas kind of musing on – uh, what he calls the fallen, which are slaves, basically. Fallen. Who tracks our footsteps, I wonder? We who are the forgotten, the discounted and the ignored. When the path is failure, it is never willingly taken. The fallen. Why does my heart weep for them? Not them, but us. For most assuredly, I am counted among them. Slaves, serfs, nameless peasants and laborers the blurred faces in the crowd, just a smear on memory, a scuffing of feet down the side passages of history. Can one stop? Can one turn and force one's eyes to pierce the gloom and see the fallen? Can one ever see the fallen? And if so, what emotion is born in that moment? There were tears on his cheeks, dripping down onto his chafed hands. He knew the answer to that question, knife sharp and driven deep. And the answer was recognition. <sighs> so oh, good. This is so good. So good. With the words and the writing and the hoy hoy. Mm hmm. Uh, I've got one more. Yeah. Um, but I'm kind of like, do you have it? You can read it too. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. Knock it out. You'll, okay. you'll be awesome. Uh, so this is Saren. Um, sort of pontificating on freedom. Her people seemed particularly well suited to surrender. Freedom was an altar supplicant struggled to reach all their lives, clawing the smooth floor until blood splattered the gleaming flawless stone. Yet the truth was it remained forever beyond the grasp of mortals. Even as any sacrifice was justified in its glory name, for all that, she knew that blasphemy was a hollow crime. Freedom was no god, and if it was, 
and if it had a face turned upon its worshippers, its expression was mocking. A slave's chains stole something he or she had never owned. So good. So good. Dang. We good. all, yeah, we all offer up a, 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 any sacrifice is worth it. And yet it's all for naught. Like it's, yeah. it's this beautiful dichotomy of, yeah, you have to try everything you can to achieve freedom mm -hmm. and you never really will. You never will. Ugh. Ah. It will turn and mock your attempts at every, that's just beautiful. Incredible. <sighs> All right, we're trucking along. We got yeah. two more chapters next week. In it, loving it, having a blast. Hope you are too. We appreciate you. Please continue to comment, pass along corrections, but most importantly, suggest topics. Give us your feedback. Tell us your special book. We love hearing all that stuff. You can do so at dlcfeedback at gmail.com. You could do it here on the YouTube or in our Discord, which is 5 by 5 DLC on Discord. Either way, we're glad you're with us, and we can't wait to see you next week. When the world's too dark of a place to be, and you need an escape from reality, open up those pages and start crying. But you're doing it with the